Oh, my eye bag still looks so bad. Whatever. A woman who works in a meat distribution factory at the end of a day walks into the freezer to check on the items before leaving for the day. And suddenly the door that only opens from the outside closed. She was trapped. You can't hear anything from inside the freezer. There wasn't anyone around to see where she had gone. All she could do was scream and pound on the thick slab of metal that was the door. Time passed and the woman started experiencing symptoms of hypothermia. After five hours, she gave up and began to give in to death as everything started to feel numb to her. And suddenly, to her great surprise, the door opened miraculously. It was a security guard, and the security guard saved her, took her out from the freezer, and as she was warming up with the blankets and towels, she asked him why he decided to open the meat freezer. And he answered, I have been working in the factory for 35 years, and hundreds of workers come in and out every day, but you're one of the few who greet me in the morning and say goodbye to me every night when leaving after work. Many treat me as I'm invisible. It's just because he didn't hear a bye, see you tomorrow that he consistently got from from one friendly, kind person that this woman's life was saved. Hey, hope you're doing well today. That's one of my favorite stories. And to be honest, I don't know if it's actually a woman or a man because I've read different versions. My dad told me about this story at the dinner table a long time ago and it just stuck with me. He was really trying to show to my sister and me the power of kindness and how doing something a little extra every day to be friendly and simply to say hi can make such an impact and you never know when it's gonna pay off in the long run. Hey guys, excuse the boy and everything. I filmed this video a few weeks ago and since then another tragedy has occurred and the concepts in this video are more relevant than ever. I'm not saying that the lessons and what I'm trying to encourage in this video are definitely the reasons that it could have saved many lives in the recent shooting but just like in the Netflix series 13 Reasons Why, unkindness can reach very far and cause many terrible things just like kindness can prevent those from happening so please 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 pass the message along and hopefully we can prevent more tragedies like this from happening with everything going around in the world right now i think there's one important thing that we don't always keep in mind and that's being kind that rhymes wow. so not you specifically i'm sure you're a very kind person but i'm talking about society as a whole the collective we. So today I'm gonna go through a bunch of stories to show the power of kindness. Not as long as the first one. Also, I'm gonna demonstrate to you guys the benefits of being kind. Because that's to those who always have this creeping thought in the back of their mind. What's in it for me? Why should I spend time watching this video? Well, you'll see. And honestly, I'm not sure how many views a video like this will get. Even though seeing higher numbers is very exciting, I think it's more that I want to see more people have this message so let's try to reach more people. When I was at Caltech, there are what we call CDS workers in the kitchens and they would be walking around like restocking the fruits, restocking the yogurt and stuff like that. There was this old Hispanic lady who I would say hi to pretty frequently anytime I see her there actually. It would always be like an hola, como estas? Practicing my Spanish a little. Sometimes we would even chat for a little bit and then one day when I said hi to her, she said, oh, is your throat sore? I was like, oh yeah, I'm just kind of recovering from a Hold. And then she said, oh, hold on. And she goes into the back, gets me two lemons and an entire new bottle of honey. And she's like, oh, use this, drink this. And I was like, oh, this is from the kitchen and a whole new bottle. Like, are you sure I can just take this? And she's like, oh, no, 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 no worries. Just for you. And just because I was friendly to her, like that interaction in and of itself is pretty happy. She probably felt happy too. When something like this happens, she would do such a nice favor to me. And I felt really special because of that. That was extremely kind of her as well. So. I think that's one of the instances that stuck with me to really show me the power of passing it along and that domino effect that we're taught. Because I think when we don't see a big event and we don't reflect on it and that result is not materialized, then we kind of forget to do something like be friendly or kind consistently. And we remember that we're benefited as well. Another example is that I chatted again with someone who works in the dining hall. I would ask about his boys playing soccer and how they're doing and stuff like that. I remember visiting again like last summer when I haven't been on campus for so long because 
you know, Rona. He gave me double the food each time that I got something. That's pretty cool too, right? These little things just kind of add up and they in and of itself just like also make you happy that you're making other people feel like they're appreciated. I've also learned and remembered other things that my dad taught me. We tend to talk a lot about like philosophical things, how to improve your character and stuff like that at the dinner table. And I'm really thankful to my dad for those talks. He told me that there's this coworker, like a, a shu shu, like you know Chinese. He was moving to a new place. Essentially, my dad went like out of his way to help this shu shu move a bunch of his stuff, even when it was like pretty late at night, spending a lot of his time and effort. And of course he didn't do this expecting anything in return, right? It was just helping out a friend just out of the pure kindness. But then many months later, my dad was applying to this teaching position and it's very prestigious and hard to get into. And he had to write a bunch of materials. Shu Shu was somehow affiliated with this program he wanted to get into. And then he would stay up after a long day of work reading my dad's materials, helping him write, edit it, and just perfect it as much as possible. My dad would always be like, oh, like, no, don't worry about it. It's been a long day of work. And this Shu Shu did already have like 16 hour work days. At this time, Shu Shu was on the other side of the world. So it was even more difficult, but he was still staying up, spending four hours additionally a night to help my dad with this. And Shu Shu replies to my dad, oh no, don't worry about it. I just remember about how you helped me move in that one time. And every time I think about that, I'm so grateful. But overall, this shows the immense impact that some series of actions and gestures can make people remember it. And then in years even, people will kind of feel like they just want to do nice things for you. And I wanted to really think of some other concrete examples of how people have helped me. The case of not being able to remember examples though just really speaks clearly about the quote that people will not remember what you say necessarily, but they'll always remember how you made them feel. I remember how in my hometown, in our our very snowy winters, we would drive on the highway slowly and then we would see cars broken down on the street. But then one time we literally saw another car stop and go help that car that was broken down. And they're literally strangers. And that's another amazing thing that just makes you really believe in humanity again, as extreme as that sounds. I think we should really remember those and use that as ways to propel ourselves to do better every day. I realize this is becoming kind of preachy. I mean, I think it's interesting and helpful. So hopefully you guys do too, because, well, this will definitely be helpful to you guys if you're one of those people. <laughs> I realize I'm being very um, mysterious. So when I receive a DM or comment, I'm way more inclined to help them if it seems like they put effort in their messaging. Because sometimes when people ask for help, they literally just say like, do this. Do it or like, can you read my essay? There's not even a please. I mean, I want to, but also I just feel like I don't really know how to describe it. It is difficult with virtual communication because you can't really see the person, the human on the other side. I mean, that's why cyberbullying exists and everything like that. Just by writing a compliment or showing some token of appreciation, then someone's gonna be way more inclined to help you. And that's gonna take you farther in life too, because that's how you're gonna get those mentorships. And when you do cold outreach to people who you want, Want help from, like whether it's in your job, career, school, whatever, you're gonna get a much higher hit rate. I guarantee it. A lot of times people think about what can I gain first, but an effective habit is to give first. Show that you value their time. You can give compliments too. If someone looks good and you think they look good and you don't tell them, that's a crime. But of course be genuine because people can tell when you're just using flattery. I hope that this discussion today opens your mind and reinforces something that we all know deep down. See how you can apply it to your life as soon as possible. And like I said in the beginning of my video, I truly hope you're well. And remember to do a little extra for someone today and you might just get a little extra back.